let's bring into the conversation to talk about all of this even further. Jonathan Shanzer with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He joins me. Uh, Jonathan, good to see you. Uh, thanks for being with us here. Uh, you heard there in Trey's report that soundbite from Matthew Miller at the State Department about, you know, recognizing Palestinian statehood, the idea of the two-state solution. David Cameron, the UK Foreign Secretary, open to that as well. And then the news today about U.S. sanctions uh, on Israeli settlers in the West Bank uh, over their waging of violence against some of these Palestinians there in the West Bank, uh, financial sanctions against those directing or participating in certain actions, including acts or threats of violence against civilians, intimidating civilians to cause them to leave their homes, destroying or seizing property, or engaging in terrorist activity in the West Bank. You know, Jonathan, the war's not over yet. Why are all of these actions being done now? Are they a diversion, a distraction? What is the Biden administration, I guess, aiming to accomplish with these? Well, the Biden administration is aiming to get reelected. And, and, and I think we need to understand that we've just entered into the thick of political season here in the United States. You see the president stumping in Michigan right now. This is a critical swing state for the president. He cannot afford for that to go to the Republicans. And so he's speaking to folks in Dearborn. And you cannot say that you support uh, Israel's right to defend itself necessarily in that context there as he's on the stump. He's, I think at this point, trying to show the American voters that he's trying to insert some balance. Now, whether that balance is warranted or not, whether it's justified is another story. But I think we can probably take a look at the two actions today and, and break them down. The first being the uh, the intent to declare a Palestinian state. We now see that on the part of the U.S. and the U.K. The idea that the Palestinians are ready for statehood is it's just simply not tethered to reality. Um, this is a government where the current president is now 88. He is 19 years into a four-year term. Corruption is at a record high. Approval from the Palestinian people is at a record low. They barely control their nominal capital of Ramallah, let alone the rest of the West Bank, and they certainly don't have control over Gaza. So the idea that somehow we can flip a switch and turn on Palestinian statehood is just not realistic. And I think actually it would be dangerous. Uh, you know, we heard the spokesman there talking about how uh, this would be uh, a, a state that would also provide for security guarantees for Israel. There are no security guarantees when you offer sovereignty to a government that doesn't function. And that is just something I think that we're going to have to wrestle with during this election season. It's one thing to tell people what they want to hear, but it's also another thing to engage in reckless policy that I think could backfire. And that leads me to the second action taken today um, against settlers. And, and look, I think that anybody who breaks the law, anyone who takes law into their own hands, should be held accountable. But I also think that there is a fair amount of virtue signaling that's happening here. The uh, Biden administration, again, I think is trying to show uh, folks in Michigan and perhaps you know, uh, progressives, uh, pro-Palestinian voters across the United States that they're getting tough on Israel. But the idea that we would impose sanctions on an allied country that has, uh, A, that it's a democracy, B, that has a functioning judiciary, and C, has a capable police force. I mean, they've just taken sovereign action out of the hands of the Israelis. These sorts of things happen with enemy states, with adversarial right. states. They don't really happen at all when dealing with a democracy. We would never, ever dream of, for example, slapping sanctions on UK nationals um, or French nationals. This is something that appears that we're only willing to do with the Israelis in an effort to signal to American voters what's going on. So I'm a bit disappointed with some of these things that have happened today, not because they're necessarily wrong. I mean, I'm certainly in favor of a Palestinian state at the end of the day, and I'm in favor of law and order in the West Bank and everywhere else. But I do get a sense that this is connected directly to stumping for uh, a second term. 
and I really don't think that uh, U.S. foreign policy should be dictated uh, by that. Certainly not now, probably not ever in my view. So, Jonathan, your, your view is it is purely signaling. The Biden administration is just telling people what they want to hear right now because it is a, a re-election year as well. I mean, to me, kind of looking at the executive order, the sanctions against Israeli settlers in the West Bank, that just seems to be kind of taking the United States' eye off the ball in their effort to aid Israel in their war aims here. And, and you know, you and I have talked at the outset after October 7th that the two-state solution, the idea of a Palestinian state, was was dead in the water because of Hamas's attack on Israel. And, and so you see this kind of revivifying of it, even when the war is still going on. And there's no ceasefire yet. Uh, you know, there's been a week-long ceasefire, but that was mere months ago. What's the wisdom of talking about all of this now when the fighting is still going on? Well, look, I, I'm not sure there's a lot of wisdom to it. I think they're trying to provide a political horizon. Um, there's, you know, th th this administration is hearing it. They're getting an earful every day from Arab states that want to know how the United States is going to bring this to, you know, a, a soft landing. Um, you know, the administration is hearing from constituents as well saying, you know, why are you not being more balanced in all of this? As if there is a way to balance American support for a war that was launched by a terrorist organization when one of our allies is responding the way that any other country would. So all of this is a bit awkward. But even beyond that, it's awkward when we take into account the fact that, for example, the Qataris, right? These are sponsors of Hamas. They've got blood on their hands after 10-7. And I've seen not one action by the Treasury Department, no sanctions against any actor in Qatar since this war began. We've got actors in Turkey that are just begging for additional Treasury designations. Um, you know, and not to mention the Hamas leaders that are based here in the United States and fundraisers around Europe. I mean, the, the list of sanctions that we could impose against Hamas is incredibly long. And here we are, um, picking a fight with four really random settlers okay. uh, and people that, again, you know, I, I, I'm not carrying water for these people. I think that if they've, you know, uh, engaged in violence, unsanctioned violence by the state, that is something that requires punishment. But I would expect first to see some kind of a letter from the president publicly calling upon the prime minister of Israel to take legal action against these people. Yeah. This is political theater right now. Okay. And again, you just got to ask yourself, you know, how is it that we've just watched the U.S. bureaucracy, I don't know how many man hours, went into this designation that will accomplish nothing. It's not like we're freezing assets and, uh, you know, I'm not sure whether these people are planning Disney World vacations in the United States anytime soon. So this just seems like a lot of posturing right now uh, when there are very serious national security issues at stake that we have not yet tackled. That's really my concern. So, Jonathan, we have this picture. I don't believe this is live. This might be what we call tape playback. Marine one there on the tarmac. You know, Jonathan, tomorrow the president and the first lady will travel to Dover, Delaware, uh, at the Air National Guard base there, uh, where President Biden and the first lady, they will... Uh, you know, welcome the caskets uh, of the three U.S. soldiers who tragically lost their life in that attack last Sunday. It's the dignified transfer. That's what it's known as. Um, and of course, family members and friends of those victims uh, and those soldiers will be there. Let's talk about the response that is incoming. We're awaiting it, uh, what the U.S. might do against some of these Iran-backed proxy groups um, it's been almost a week, Jonathan. We haven't seen a response just yet. We know President Biden has made up his mind about what he wants to do and has authorized Dutch. I want to put up this tweet here uh, and get you to respond. This is from our friend there at Fox, Lucas Tomlinson, uh, kind of quoting Austin, Defense Secretary Austin, when asked by Jennifer Griffin today this. Uh, if the U.S. had telegraphed its response too much against Iran's proxy groups, allowing its leaders to return to Iran after killing three American soldiers. Austin says, we will have a multi-tiered response here. Is that a concern amongst a lot of folks? Is it valid that, you know, we've signaled and telegraphed what we're going to do in response so much so that it might not have the punch that we are hoping it has? 
Well, I mean, first of all, there's just zero element of surprise here. You know, that we've already talked about kind of what we're going to hit, who we're going to hit, where we're going to hit them. I mean, there have been some really strange exchanges between uh, the U.S. and Iran and and even the U.S. and Iraq. I mean, one of the things that we heard from uh, Iran was, hey, you know, uh, don't we don't want a war with you. Uh, so as long as you agree not to hit us in Iranian territory, we won't have a war. So it seems like we're negotiating with our adversary here after they, uh, by proxy, just killed three of our service members. That's weird. Uh, then we hear that uh, Kataib Hezbollah, the Shiite militia that was responsible for this attack, that they have uh, apparently announced the suspension of their operations for fear of retribution from the United States. Now, the U.S. is now saying that we're going to be extremely surgical. We're going to be taking out uh, weapons storage facilities. In other words, it's not at all clear to me that we're actually going to take out any of the leaders responsible for these attacks. I certainly hope that we see a multi-tiered attack along the lines of what Secretary Austin has suggested. But I'd like to see one that is filled with surprise. I'd like to see one that is filled with meaningful targets um, and, you know, really send a message to the Iranian regime, which has now sparked, and I think we should be clear here, this is a regional war that we're watching. This is no longer just a question of Hamas having attacked Israel and Israel responding in kind. The Iranian regime has activated Hezbollah in Lebanon. They've activated about a dozen and a half different Shiite militias that have attacked American bases in Iraq and Syria more than 165 times. Yeah. They've killed three servicemen. They've uh, actually created attacks that have led to traumatic brain injuries to dozens of people. A contractor died from a heart attack early on in this conflict, and we haven't even started to talk about what's been going on in Yemen, how the Iran-backed Houthis have shut down uh, a major shipping lane that brings right. energy to Europe. Um, so this is all tracking back to one address, and that is Iran. And what's amazing is we're not even threatening them right now. Um, you know, we're talking to them about the ways in which we're going to strike them that would please them. Right. And this just doesn't make a lot of sense to me strategically. Okay. I know the president is trying to avoid a, a wider war. I understand why we would want to do that. Um, and again, I think we should not ignore the fact that um, presidential politics may play a role here. The president okay. knows that this would not be popular, and so he's trying to avoid this. And I understand the political reasons here, but there is national security considerations also at stake. And we've just got to hope here that the president sends the right message, scares the Iranians, forces them to back down, and hopefully gets them to stay in their corner while well, Israel finishes up in Gaza, and then perhaps maybe the Middle East can go back to normal, perhaps. Yeah. Secretary of State Blinken said uh, the Middle East is the most dangerous and volatile it's been since 1973. He said that earlier in the week. So uh, this uh, will just be kind of a waiting game here. We'll have to wait and see. Jonathan Shanzer, as always, we appreciate your insight and your time. Talk soon. Thanks.